Good morning. Today we're ready to start Deuteronomy. And if you're following the 90-day reading challenge, then you should read through Samuel 16. This is an interesting channel with this uh, Bible reading and challenges. I'm trying to keep up with the challenge. I'm a little bit behind on the 90-day reading challenge, so I have a lot of reading to do today besides this reading. Okay, let's start with a prayer this morning, as we always do. Dear Heavenly Father, please keep us in your hands. Hold us tight to you and help us learn from your words. Help us to be able to share with others and to be able to do your work. We ask that you come and you show us how we are to do your work. Sometimes we think that we know the answers, but we're not still enough to hear you and hear your plan for us. So let us be still in hearing your plan for us and let us learn to discern what you have in store for us and not our selfish needs. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Found the glasses. So see, prayer does work. In fact, I found four more, <laughs> which I find rather funny. <laughs> Didn't have to use the, uh, the Catholic prayer for finding things. I can't remember the name of it, but some of you may know it. I don't. The command to leave Oreb. <clears throat> Allergies again. These are the words Moses spoke to all Israel in the desert east of the Jordan. That is, in the Arabah, opposite Suf, between Paran and Tophel, and Laban, Hazaroth, and Dezahab. It takes eleven days to go from Horeb to Kadesh Barnea by the Mount Seir road. In the fortieth year, on the first day of the eleventh month, Moses proclaimed to the Israelites all that the Lord had commanded him concerning them. This was after he had defeated Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon, and Edri had defeated Og, king of Bashan, who resigned in Ashtaroth. East of the Jordan in the territory of Moab, Moses began to expound this law, saying, The Lord our God said to us at Oreb, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Break camp and advance into the hill country of the Amorites. Go to all the neighboring peoples in the Arabah, in the mountains, in the western foothills, in the Negev, and along the coast, to the lands of the Canaanites, and to Lebanon as far as the great river, the Euphrates. See, I have given you this land. Go in and take possession of the land that the Lord swore he would give your, for your fathers to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to their descendants after them. The Appointment of Leaders At that time I said to you, You are too heavy a burden for me to carry alone. The Lord your God has increased your numbers, so that today you are as many as the stars in the sky. May the Lord, the God of your fathers, increase you a thousand times and bless you as he promised. But how can I bear your problems and your burdens and your disputes all by myself? Choose some wise understanding and respected men from each of your tribes, and I will set them over you. You answered me. What you propose to do is good. So I took the leading men of your tribes, wise and respected men, and appointed them to have authority over you, as commanders of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens, and as tribal official. And I charged your judges at that time. Hear the disputes between your brothers and judge fairly. 
whether the case is between your brother Israelites or between one of them and an alien. Do not show partiality in judging. Hear both small and great alike. Do not be afraid of any man, for judgment belongs to God. Bring me any case too hard for you, and I will hear it. And at that time I told you everything you were to do. Spies set out. Then, as the Lord our God commanded us, we set out from Oreb and went west, went toward the hill country of the Amorites, through all that vast and dreadful desert that you have seen. And so we reached Kadesh Barnea. Then I said to you, You have reached the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord our God is giving us. See, the Lord your God has given you the land. Go up and take possession of it as the Lord, the God of your father, told you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Then all of you came to me and said, Let us send men ahead to spy out the lands for us and bring back a report about the route we are to take and the towns we will come to. The idea seemed good to me, so I selected twelve of you, one man from each tribe. They left and went up into the hill country and came to the valley of Eshkol and explored it. Taking with them some of the fruit of the land, they brought it down to us and reported, It is a good land that the Lord our God is giving us. Rebellion against the Lord but you were unwilling to go up. You rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. You grumbled in your tents and said, The Lord hates us, so he brought us out of Egypt to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us. Where can we go? Our brothers have made us lose heart. They say the people are stronger and taller than we are. The cities are large, with walls up to the sky. We even saw the Anakites there. Then I said to you, Do not be terrified. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God, who is going before you, will fight for you as he did for you in Egypt, before your very eyes, and in the desert. There you saw how the Lord your God carried you, as a father carries his son, all the way you went until you reached this place. In spite of this, you did not trust in the Lord your God, who went ahead of you on your journey, in fire by night and in cloud by day, to search out places for you to camp, and to show you the way you should go. When the Lord heard what you said, he was angry and solemnly swore, Not a man of this evil generation shall see the good land I swore to give your forefathers, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh. He will see it, and I will give him and his descendants the land he set his feet on, because he followed the Lord wholeheartedly. Because of you, the Lord became angry with me also and said, You shall not enter it either. But your assistant, Joshua, son of Nun, will enter it. Encourage him, because he will take Israel to inherit it. And the little ones that you said would be taken captive, your children who do not yet know good from bad, they will enter the land. I will give it to them, and they will take possession of it. But as for you, turn around and set out toward the desert along the route to the Red Sea. Then you replied, We have sinned against the Lord. We will go up and fight as the Lord our God commanded us. So every one of you put on his weapons, thinking it easy to go up into the hill country. But the Lord said to me, Tell them, Do not go up and fight, because I will not be with you. You will be defeated by your enemies. So I told you, but you would not listen. You rebelled against the Lord's command, and in your arrogance you marched up into the hill country. The Amorites who lived in these hills came out against you. They chased you like a swarm of bees and beat you down from Seir all the way to Hormah. You came back and wept before the Lord, but he paid no attention to your weeping and turned a deaf ear to you. 
and so you stayed in Kadesh many days, all the time you spent there, wanderings in the desert. Then we turned back and set out toward the desert along the route to the Red Sea, as the Lord had directed me. For a long time we made our way around the hill country of Seir. Then the Lord said to me, You have made your way around this hill country long enough. Now turn north. Give the people these orders. You are about to pass through the territory of your brothers, the descendants of Esau, who lived in Seir. They will be afraid of you, but be very careful. Do not provoke them to war, for I will not give you any of their land, not even enough to put your foot on. I have given Esau the hill country of Seir as his own. You are to pay them in silver for the food you eat and the water you drink. The Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He has watched over your journey through this vast desert. These forty years the Lord your God has been with you, and you have not lacked anything. So we went on past our brothers, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir. We turned from the Araba road, which comes up from Eloth and Ezion Geber, and traveled along the desert road of Moab. Then the Lord said to me, Do not harass the Moabites, or provoke them to war, for I will not give you any part of their land. I have given Ar to the descendants of Lot as a possession. The Emites used to live there, a people strong and numerous, and as tall as the Anakites. Like the Anakites, they too were considered Rephahites, Rephahites, but the Moabites called them Emites. Horites used to live in Seir, but the descendants of Esau drove them out. They destroyed the Horites from before them and settled in their place, just as Israel did in the land the Lord gave them as their possession. And the Lord said, now get up and cross the Zerad Valley. So we crossed the valley. Thirty-eight years passed from the time we left Kadesh Barnea until we crossed the Zerad Valley. By then the entire generation of fighting men had perished from the camp, as the Lord had sworn to them. The Lord's hand was against them until he completely eliminated them from the camp. Now when the last of these fighting men among the people had died, the Lord said to me, Today you are to pass by the region of Moab at Ar. When you come to the Ammonites, do not harass them or provoke them to war. For I will not give you possession of any land belonging to the Ammonites. I have given it as a possession to the descendants of Lot. That too was considered a land of the Rephahedes who used to live there, but the Ammonites called them Zamzumites. They were a people strong and numerous and tall as the Anakites. The Lord destroyed them from before the Ammonites, who drove them out and settled in their place. The Lord had done the same for the descendants of Esau who lived in Seir, when he destroyed the Horites from before them. They drove them out and have lived in their place to this day. And as for the Avites, who lived in villages as far as Gaza, the Kaphtorites coming out of Kaphtor destroyed them and settled in their place. Defeat of Shion, king of Eshbon. Set out now and cross the Arnon Gorge. See, I have given into your hand Sihon, the Amorite king of Eshbon and his country. Begin to take possession of it and engage him in battle. This very day I will put the terror and fear of you on all the nations under heaven. They will hear reports of you and will tremble and will be anguish because of you. From the desert of Ketamoth I sent messengers to Sihon, king of Heshbon, offering peace and saying, Let us pass through your country. We will stay on the maiden road. We will not turn aside to the right or to the left. Sell us food to eat and water to drink for their price 
and silver. Only let us pass through on foot. As descendants of Esau, who live in Seir, and the Moabites, who live in Ar, did for us. Until we cross the Jordan into the land the Lord our God is giving us. But Zihon, king of Heshbon, refused to let us pass. For the Lord your God had made his spirit stubborn, and his heart obstinate, in order to give him into your land, hands, as he has now done. The Lord said to me, See, I have begun to deliver Sihon and his country over to you. Now begin, now begin to conquer and possess his land. When Sihon and all his army came out to meet us in battle at Jahaz, the Lord our God delivered him over to us, and we struck him down, together with his sons and his whole army. At that time we took all his towns and completely destroyed them, men, women, and children. We left no survivors. But the livestock and the plunder from the towns we had captured we carried off for ourselves. From Arar on the rim of the Arnon Gorge and from the town in the gorge even as far as Gilead, not one town was too strong for us. The Lord our God gave us all of them, but in accordance with the command of the Lord our God, you did not encroach on any of the land of the Ammonites, neither the land along the course of the Jabbok, nor that around the towns and the hills. Defeat of Og, King of Bashan Next we turned and went up the road toward Bashan, and Og, king of Bashan, with his whole army, marched out to meet us in battle at Edri. The Lord said to me, Do not be afraid of him, for I have handed him over to you with his whole army and his land. Do to him what you did to Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Hashbon. So the Lord our God also gave into our hands Og, king of Bashan, and all his army. We struck them down, leaving no survivors. At that time we took all his cities. There was not one of the sixty cities that we did not take from them, the whole region of Argob, Og's kingdom in Bashan. All these cities were fortified with high walls and with gates and bars, and there were also a great many unwalled villages. We completely destroyed them, as we had done with Sihon, king of Eshbon, destroying every city, men, women, and children. But all the livestock and the plunder from their cities we carried off for ourselves. So at that time we took from these two kings of the Amorites the territory east of Jordan, from the Arnon Gorge as far as Mount Hermon. Hermon is called Sirion by the Sidonians, the Amorites call it Sanir. We took all the towns on the plateau and all Gilead, and all Bashan as far as Selka and Edri, towns of Og's kingdom in Bashan. Only Og, king of Bashan, was left of the remnant of the Rephahades. His bed was made of iron as it was more than thirteen long and six feet wide. It is still in Rabbah of the Ammonites. Division of the Land Get a drink. Of the land that we took over at that time, I gave the Reubenites and the Gadites the territory north of Aror by the Harnon Gorge including half the hill country of Gilead, together with its towns. The rest of Gilead, Gilead, and also all of Bashan, the king of Og, I gave to the half-tribe of Manasseh. The whole region of Argob in Bashan used to be known as the land of the Rephahades. Jar, Jar, Jair, a descendant of Manasseh, took the whole region of Argob as far as the border of the Geshurites and the Makathites. It was named after him so that to this day Bashan is called Havath 
Jair, and I gave Gilead to Machir. But to the Reubenites and the Gadites I gave the territory extending from Gilead down to the Aaron Gorge, the middle of the gorge being the border, and out to the Jabbok River, which is the border of Ammonites. Its western border was Jordan in the Arabah, from Kinnereth to the Sea of the Arabah, the Salt Sea, below the slopes of Pisgah. I commanded you at that time, the Lord your God has given you this land to take possession of it, but all your able-bodied men, armed for battle, must cross over ahead of your brother Israelites. However, your wives, your children, and your livestock, I know you have much livestock, may stay in the towns I have given you until the Lord gives rest to your brothers, as he has to you. And they too have taken over the land that the Lord your God is giving them across the Jordan. After that, each of you may go to the possession I have given you. Moses forbidden to cross the Jordan. At that time I commanded Joshua, You have seen with your own eyes all that the Lord your God has done to these two kings. The Lord will do the same to all the kingdoms over there where you are going. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God himself will fight for you. At that time I pleaded with the Lord. O sovereign Lord, you have begun to show to your servant your greatness and your strong hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do the deeds and mighty works you do? Let me go over and see the good land beyond the Jordan, that fine hill country in Lebanon. But because of you, the Lord was angry with me and would not listen to me. That is enough, the Lord said. Do not speak to me any more about this matter. Go up to the top of Pishkah and look west and north and south and to east. Look at the land with your own eyes, since you are not going to cross this Jordan. But commission Joshua and encourage and strengthen him. For he will lead these people across and will cause them to inherit the land that you will see. So he stayed in the valley near Beth Peor. Obedience commanded. Hear now, O Israel, the decrees and laws I am about to teach you. Follow them that you, so that you may live and may go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. Do not add what I command you. Do not add to what I command you. And do not subtract from it. But keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. You saw with your own eyes what the Lord did at Baal Peor. The Lord your God destroyed from among you everyone who followed the Baal of Peor. But all of you who held fast to the Lord your God are still alive today. See, I have taught you decrees and laws, as the Lord my God commanded me, so that you may follow them in the land you are entering to take possession of it. Observe them carefully, for this will show you wisdom and understanding to the nations. You will hear all about these decrees and say, Surely this great nation is wise and understanding. Is a wise and understanding people. What other nation <clears throat> is so great as to have their gods near them, the way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to him? And what other nations is so great as to have such righteous decrees and laws as this body of laws I am setting before you today? Only be careful and watch yourselves closely, so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them slip from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. Remember the day you stood before the Lord your God at Oreb when he said to me, Assemble the people before me to hear my words so that they may learn to revere me as long as they live in the land and may teach them to their children. You came near and stood at the foot of the mountain while it blazed with fire to the very heavens, 
with black clouds and deep darkness. Then the Lord spoke to you out of the fire. You heard the sounds of words, but saw no form. There was only a voice. He declared to you his covenant, the Ten Commandments, which he commanded you to follow, and then wrote them on two stone tablets. And the Lord directed me at that time to teach you the decrees and laws you are to follow in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. Idolatry Forbidden You saw no form of any kind the day the Lord spoke to you at Oreb out of the fire. Therefore, watch yourselves very carefully, so that you do not become corrupt, and make for yourselves an idol, an image of any shape, whether formed like a man or a woman, or like any animal on earth, or any bird that flies in the air, or like any creature that moves along the ground, or any fish in the waters below. And when you look up to the sky and see the sun, the moon, and the stars, all the heavenly array, do not be enticed into bowing down to them and worshiping things the Lord your God has a portion to all the nations under heaven. But as for you, the Lord took you and brought you out of the iron smelting furnace out of Egypt to be the people of his inheritance as you now are. The Lord was angry with me because of you and he solemnly swore that I would not cross the Jordan and enter the good land the Lord your God is giving you as your inheritance. I will die in this land. I will not cross the Jordan, but you are about to cross over and take possession of that good land. Be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord your God that he made with you. Do not make for yourselves an idol in the form of anything the Lord your God has forbidden. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. After you have had children and grandchildren and have lived in that land a long time, if you do then become corrupt and make any kind of idol, doing evil in the eyes of the Lord your God and provoking him to anger, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you this day that you will quickly perish from the land that you are crossing. The Jordan to possess. You will not live there long, but will certainly be destroyed. The Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and only a few of you will survive among the nations to which the Lord will drive you. There you will worship man-made gods of wood and stone, which cannot see, hear, eat, or smell. But if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him, if you look for him with all your heart and with all your soul. When you are in distress and all these things have happened to you, then in later days you will return to the Lord your God and obey him. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon or destroy you or forget the covenant with your fathers, which he confirmed to them by oath. The Lord is God. Ask now about former days, long before your time, from the day God created man on earth. Ask from one end of the heavens to the other. Has anything so great as this ever happened, or has anything like it ever been heard of? Has any other people heard the voice of God speaking out of fire, as you have and lived? Has any God ever tried to take for himself one nation out of another nation? by testings, by miraculous signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, or by great and awesome deeds, like all the things the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. You were shown these things so that you might know that the Lord is God. Beside him there is no other. From heaven he made you. Hear his voice to discipline you. On earth he showed you his great fire, and you heard his words from out of the fire. Because he loved your forefathers and chose their descendants after them, he brought you out of Egypt by his presence and his great strength. 
to drive out before you nations greater and stronger than you, and to bring you into their land, to give it to you for your inheritance, as it is today. Acknowledge and take heart this day that the Lord is God, in heaven above and on earth below. There is no other. Keep his decrees and commands, which I am giving you today, so that you may, so that it may go well with you and your children after you, and that you may live long in the land the Lord your God gives you for all times. Cities of Refuge Then Moses set aside three cities east of the Jordan, to which anyone who had killed a person could flee, if he had unintentionally killed his neighbor, without malice of forethought. He could flee into one of these cities and save his life. These cities were Bezer and the Desert Plateau, for the Reubenites, Ramoth and Gilead, for the Gadites, and Golan in Bashan, for the Manassites. Introduction to the Law This is the law Moses set before the Israelites. These are the stipulations, decrees, and laws Moses gave them when they came out of Egypt and were in the valley near Beth Peor, east of the Jordan, in the land of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon and was defeated by Moses, and the Israelites as they came out of Egypt. They took possession of his land and the land of Og, king of Bashan, the two Amorite kings east of Jordan. This land extended from Eor on the rim of the Arnon Gorge to Mount Sion, that is Hermon, and included all the Arabeth east of Jordan, as far as the Sea of the Arabah below the slopes of Pisgah. The Ten Commandments Moses summoned all Israel and said, Hear, O Israel, the decrees and laws I declare in your hearing today. Learn them and be sure to follow them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Oreb. It was not with our forefathers that the Lord made this covenant, but with us. With all of us who are alive here today, the Lord spoke to you face to face out of the fire on the mountain. At that time I stood between the Lord and you to declare to you the word of the Lord. Because you were afraid of the fire and did not go up the mountain, he said. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I am the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your ox, your donkey, or any of your animals, nor the alien within your gates, so that your manservant and maidservant may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God has commended, commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother, as the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live long, and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, 
You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not set your desire on your neighbor's house or land, his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. These are the commandments the Lord proclaimed in loud voice to your whole assembly there on the mountain from out of the fire. The cloud and the deep darkness. And he added nothing more. Then he wrote them on two stone tablets and gave them to me. When you heard the voice out of the darkness, while the mountain was ablaze with fire, all the leading men of your tribes and your elders came to me. And you said, The Lord our God has shown us glory and his majesty, and we have heard his voice from the fire. Today we have seen that a man can live even if God speaks with him. But now, why should we die? This great fire will consume us, and we will die if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer. For what mortal has ever heard the voice of the living God, speaking out of fire as we have, and survived? Go near and listen to all that the Lord our God says. Then tell us whatever the Lord our God tells you. We will listen and obey. The Lord heard you when you spoke to me, and the Lord said to me, I have heard what these people said to you. Everything they said was good. Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commands, always, so it might go well with them and their children forever. Go tell them to return to their tents, but you stay here with me so that I may give you all the commands, decrees, and laws you are to teach them to follow in the land I am giving them to possess. So be careful to do the, do what the Lord your God has commanded you. Do not turn aside to the right or to the left. Walk in all the way that the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land you will possess. Love the Lord your God. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land you are crossing the Jordan to possess. So that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, O Israel. And be careful to obey, so that it may go well with you, and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to you, to your forefathers, to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of Syria slavery. Fear the Lord your God, serve him only, and take your oaths in his name. Do not follow other gods, the gods of the peoples around you, for the Lord your God who is among you is a jealous God, and his anger will burn against you, and he will destroy you from the face of the land. Do not test the Lord your God as you did in Massa. Be sure to keep the commands of the Lord your God 
and the stipulations and decrees he has given you. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight, so that it may go well with you and you may go in and take over the land that the Lord promised on oath to your forefathers. Thrusting out all your enemies before you, as the Lord said. In the future, when your son asks you, what is the meaning of the stipulations, decrees, and laws the Lord our God has commanded you? Tell him, we were the slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Before our eyes the Lord sent miraculous signs and wonders, great and terrible, upon Egypt and Pharaoh and his whole household. But he brought us out from there to bring us in and give us the land that he promised on oath to our forefathers. The Lord commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear the Lord our God, so that we might always prosper and be kept alive, as is the case today. And if we are careful to obey all this law before the Lord our God, as he commanded us, that will be our righteousness. And we're going to stop there. We'll start chapter 7 tomorrow. Everybody have a blessed day. And remember, practice a little kindness. It goes far. <laughs>